everyone, my name is Elizabeth, this is Really Lizzy Stitches, and this is false tune number 59. Uh, okay, so it's April the 12th, yes, April the 12th, 2024, and I have lots of projects to show you today um, that all, that kind of hit all the different categories, like I have a couple finishes, there's a new start, some whips, a new start that hasn't happened yet, but it will happen this afternoon. <laughs> and then um, I got my round robin project back. I got my round robin project back. So anyway, I figured we could just go ahead and get right into the finishes. And yeah, it's been three weeks since my last video. I guess I should mention that. But anyway, let's talk about finishes. Okay, so as most of you know, I had two really big plans to finish two of my projects before the new Lola Crow Deadly Aquarium style started, and I am proud to say that I was successful in my attempts to complete these projects. So the first one is a Love Boat Sampler by Artist Design. Um, this is stitched on 36 count Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers Linen in the color Summer Soiree. And I did a custom color conversion using some of the called for color and cotton, but most of it is like color and cotton that I just pulled from my monthly club stash. There's a few DMC, and then the blues that you see here are Forbidden Fiber Company Floss. And yeah, it just looks so good, and I'm so excited. Especially since at the end of this month is Stitch North. And so the two girls I started this with, Liz from Elizabeth Yankin Stitch and Shiloh from X Stitch MD, they will both be there, and so I'm excited to bring my projects so I can show them uh, that I, you know, I have my mine finished now. So yeah. And I did sneak my initials in over here, and then the year right there. So yeah. I stitched it with uh, two thread or two strands of floss over two linen threads. Um, I really love third or two over two on 36 count because I like how graphic and plush it is. <laughs> but yeah. Eek. Okay. And then the next finish that I Oh, this whole time there was like a little fuzzy on there. I don't think you could probably tell. It was over here. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> okay, so the next finish that I have is The Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, so this, like I said, is The Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. And... I guess on that one, I kind of told you, I started it last year at Stitch North, and I finished it, like, when did I finish it? I finished it on March the 23rd, and this one I finished on uh, April the 6th, so just a few days ago. But this is The Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, the fabric is 36 count, picture this plus, and Mirage. Again, I did two strands of floss over two linen threads. Um, I pretty much used all the called for except for instead of chalk I used just B5200 and then instead of whatever the over dyed orange is I used pumpkin pie from Color and Cotton and yeah and I was trying so hard to find a place to like sneak my initials on here but there was nothing that I was doing that I really loved so I just decided to leave it off um, which is fine. Sometimes the piece just, it just doesn't fit in, so. But yeah. And I, so, since my last video, to get this to a finish, I had to stitch 3,275 stitches. Which is crazy. But yes, I'm so excited to have this one done as well, because that means that, a court, our counting Frankenscat right there, the Fox and Love Boat. I have finished three projects since my last new start, and so Deadly Aquarium is greatly earned. <laughs> um, and that actually comes out, it's like 11 something Eastern, and it comes out, the pattern comes out 2 p.m. Eastern today, so um, I'm so excited. I Probably about when I edit this video, it'll be out, um, but well, not probably, it will, because there's no way I'm getting this video edited and uploaded before 2 p.m. today. But yeah, anyway, so I'm so excited to have those two finishes. Okay, so I did have like a little baby start. Uh, I'm not counting it towards my main starts because it's a small, but it is a start nonetheless. And that is Lizzie Kate's Spring Smalls. 
and this is a little like collection of four charts so I'm doing this one that says spring and I do have all of the other season charts and so I'm planning to stitch the one that says the name of the season during the season that it's in so hopefully by the end of the year I will have all four of them done and so I'm going to do I'm doing all of them on vintage country mocha I pulled some uh, color and cottons from my stash to stitch this and this is how mine's looking I love it so much I think the colors I picked are playing really well together so I basically, when I started this, I did a, my cut of um, Vintage Country Mocha is like a fat quarter, but it already had like a corner of it cut out that I had used for another small. So when I started this, there was like already a weird little long rectangle piece sticking out of the larger piece of the fabric. So I basically just kind of um, started it in like the center on the left I guess like a left center start and then I did all these X's along the bottom and like this grass and the little chicks feet so that I could see how wide the piece was gonna be so I would know where to cut it on the end here so I could just finish stitching it um, without having a huge piece of fabric and also not having to do as much math and like measuring because I just was not ready for that <laughs> so anyway but that is what it looks like so far uh, basically just moving from left to right so I finished that basket last night and there's some eggs in there so this will be done relatively fast if I don't have it done before stitch north then I will finish it at stitch north so yeah anyway but that's what that looks like and I think it's really funny because with these small charts there's like so many colors for how little it is like the purple that's in there is literally only the letter P. That's the only time it's used. <laughs> um, but that's I guess that's a good thing with me having a good overdyed collection is I could just pull from that rather than feeling obligated to go buy all of the variegated flosses that um, are actually called for in the chart. Because of course you could use DMC, but I think it adds a little fun extra flavor <laughs> when you use some variegated floss so anyway that is what that looks like it should be done pretty fast so <laughs> okay and then I have a few more projects let's see so the next thing I don't know how chronological this is we will just show this one <laughs> um, so I decided that I wanted to stitch a little bit on castle homecoming and so I got a little bit of work done on it let's see I've only stitched on it, I think, twice this week. Yeah. So it, I've only stitched 100 or 341 stitches um, since I last showed this to you. But this is what this project is going to look like. And then this is what it would have looked like last time I showed it to you. Oh, that just fell. <laughs> and this is what mine looks like now. There we go. So yeah, um, I'm stitching mine on 40 count. Uh, picture this plus in Valor, which is a called for color. Um, and I'm using all the called for DMC. And then there's two uh, called for classic color works that are like pixie dust and blacksmith or something like that. They're really cute. The pixie dust one is really fun because it's like pink and purple variegated. Eek. There's the pixie dust right there. And then what is it called? Blacksmith blue. So yeah. And some of the pixie dust is like right here. And then there's like some sparkles right there that, that are kind of hard to see. And then there's some of it mixed into the unicorn's tail and whatnot. But I basically had been filling in the rest of this little bugle horn girl. And then I started filling out some of the bridge that they're walking on. Um, but yeah. It's been really fun to stitch on, stitch this on 40 count. Um, I definitely had my moments of like doubting myself, like thinking it was too pastel and that this fabric was too modeled and everything like that. But I think it um, is going to look really cute. So, and I feel like I probably say something similar to that every time I talk about it, but <laughs> that's just kind of how I feel. So, 
But yeah, I think I am probably gonna bring this one with me to Stitch North because I actually bought the chart for this while I was at Stitch North last year. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think this one might be coming with me. I don't really know how like realistic it will be to stitch on since it is 40 count and it's like a crazy colored fabric and whatnot, but I can hope and dream. <laughs> so that's what um, Castle Homecoming looks like. I'm gonna find this needle minder that I dropped. Okay, I found it. It had my needle on it, so I really didn't want it to, like, be lost in the carpet or something. <laughs> okay, the next project I worked on was also kind of a very random decision. Um, it is my Sweetheart Campfire by Thomas Kincaid. This is my... I think the dryer just finished. Um, this is my Thomas Kincaid full coverage piece, and this is what it's going to look like, and this is what it would have looked like last time I showed it to you. Uh, I think this is the first time I've worked on this this year, and I have stitched 935 stitches. So you might notice something different. Um, first of all, there's threads everywhere. That is because I like to park my threads. Um, but I got really antsy because I was really close to where Mick, Minnie and Mickey are sitting. So um, normally I've been stitching this in a diagonal, and when I realized that I was this close to Minnie, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna stitch the 310 kind of down to where her ear is. And then I was like, well, I'm not gonna stop there. So then I started stitching kind of around her face. And yeah, so it is so weird because like while I was stitching it, I was like, like the colors I was pulling to stitch it, I was like, this is so weird. Like they're so orange, like there's not even any white. Like it's just like, there's like yellow down here. And I was like so baffled because it was just not the colors I was expecting. Um, but it is looking like Minnie Mouse. Um, and I know it's going to turn out right because the little digital mock-up that I have um, looks like the picture here. So <laughs> anyway, but it's just so cool to see like how all these different random colors come together to create the image. So yeah. But anyway, I think I probably am going to... I don't know if I want to maybe keep playing around. It's kind of hard to stitch over here the way I have it because the fabric is folded around the back. So I kind of have to hold it out of the way like this. So I think I might just leave this as is and continue stitching diagonally and then maybe come back over here just if I feel like it. But having this here is like exciting because at least while I'm stitching over here, like in the diagonal, I can still look at this and be like, oh, look what it's gonna look like, you know? Have a little bit better idea rather than just being like antsy about like when I'm gonna get there. <laughs> so yeah. But I started this like January of 2021 and I actually like made a little spreadsheet to see if I wanted to get 50,000 stitches on this this year, I basically would have to stitch 1200 stitches every week and that does not happen because that's just unrealistic for my lifestyle um but i did go ahead and like i'm still putting in how many i stitched just to see like how unrealistic that is so maybe i can i don't know i kind of like looking at the numbers it's a little nerdy i guess but it's fun so <laughs> We will see how far this one gets along this year. Th my main concern is that I don't want this to be like a project where I only work on it during New Year's Eve 12 by 12, where I stitch on it for 12 hours. So I just want to make sure there's some way that I can constantly put some stitches in just so it's getting some progress. Because this definitely is going to take a long time to finish. I think it's only at like, it's less than 12%. It's like 11 point something. So anyway, that is Sweetheart Campfire. Okay, and then the last project that I'm gonna show you is not a, well, I guess it's a whip, but I didn't put any, I didn't make any progress on it because it's my round robin. Um, so I think we're basically done. I feel like, I feel like almost everybody has their project back for the most part. Um, but yeah, so I got my project back, which means all the girls have stitched on mine. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. So, um, the fabric I chose is 36 count linen by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers in the color Mermaid Mules. And then the DMC is 2 over 2 and the color, or the DMC is 3842. And yeah, 
Oh, it looks incredible. So, um, let me get my board so I can like point to things. Okay, so this one is my flower and I put EO. So this was before I got married and I'm just gonna leave my maiden uh, name initials on there because that's what was happening when we started this. And then this one is Megan uh, from the Seattle Stitcher, Alexis from Alexis My Amazing World, Bridgen from the Museum Stitcher, uh, Marjorie, Marjorie Maid, Cam, Cam the Stitcher, and Maddie from Kitty Stitch. It was very weird reading all those initials backwards. <laughs> um, Maddie's the only one who doesn't have floss tube. She's on Instagram. But yeah, so I just have to finish the house and then there's like the rest of the alphabet and then there's like a little um, band of little flower bouquet motif motifs at the bottom. So yeah, and uh, I think a lot of the girls have talked about, a lot of us are gonna be at StitchCon, so I think we're gonna try, those of us that are going are gonna try to finish them there so that we can, you know, ring the bell together and take cute photos and whatnot, so. I would probably also bring this with me to Stitch North just to maybe get uh, some good work in on the house because that's a lot of fill in to be doing, but yeah, I'm so excited. It just looks so cool and it's just so special having everybody stitching on the same piece and all like the meaning behind everybody's initials and everything and I'm just really thankful to have all of them as friends and have this cross stitch as like a little memento of our friendship <laughs> okay so I have we're gonna skip well not skip I'm not gonna talk about plans yet I have a couple knitting projects that I want to show and then we'll talk about plans. Um, so the first one is Bobby's Musselboro hat. And if you're new here, this is my knitting backpack. I this is I wear this on the front while I am walking. Either I, I usually go for walks at lunch or walks at lunch during work. Um, and I will knit on my walk. And sometimes if the uh, I'll walk Wilson and knit on those walks too. So, but the walking during lunch at work has been where I get a lot of my progress from. So, let's see. So this is the hat. It has gotten so big. Um, and I'm almost done with like the, just the stockinette part. So this is the Muscle Bear hat by Yasolda Teague. And basically the concept is that you knit this really big tube and then you stuff it inside of itself and then you have a hat. So it start it started with like a pinhole cast on and then it, it grows into like the crown and then you just knit a bunch of stockinette and then you decrease it uh, to match the other side. So this yellow marker is where I was in my last video three weeks ago. And I've knit quite a bit. That's probably like, I don't know, maybe like nine inches or so. Um, and then I also added these markers on this side. So this light pink one indicates the center of my hat. And um, so I have like nine dark pink markers. So I know that I need to knit until there's nine on this side. And I so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have, that would be 30 more rows. Well, there's a little bit more here. So less than 30 rows left until I start decreasing. Um, and then the hat will be done. <laughs> so I'm so excited. And this is how tiny my little ball of yarn has gotten. I think this is still like 25 grams or something like that. So, um, and I did make sure that where this pink marker is, I had like, I think I had like 54, 55 grams left on this cake and it started out as a hundred. So should have plenty of yarn to finish. And I'm hoping that there's enough left over where I could like start a scrappy blanket or something. So anyway. This is Bobby's Muscle Bear hat. And the yarn is called Big Yarn Sky, or Big Sky Yarn Company. And the color is called Grizzly Bear. And it's their like, one of their, I don't know if they have multiple sock weights or not, but it's fingering weight. And it's like a super wash merino blend with some nylon. I think it's like 75, 25 or something like that. So that is Bobby's Muscle Bear hat. And then the other, I, the other project I have is the second sock to my unicorn socks. That's what I'm calling them because the, um, this color is called Unicorn Tears. So this was the first sock that I finished. And then I started the second sock the other day. I've only worked on this like twice since I started the second sock, but 
that's what it looks like so far. Um, when I was knitting this one, I actually started it on uh, Magic Loop style, and I basically knit until after I got past the heel, and then I kind of finished out the body of the foot with the nine inch circulars, but this one I actually started with the nine inch circulars, and I should be able to stay on these until I get to the toe. Um, so I've been following the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, she's got amazing sock tutorials for different types of knitting needles. So she's got the Magic Loop, she's got nine inch circulars, she even has a double pointed needle tutorial on how to knit socks. So I'm using the nine I'm using the nine inch circular tutorial so that I know when I get to the heel turn and everything, how that is supposed to look because I've never done a heel turn with nine inch circulars. So the only thing that I realized after I started this, first of all, it took me forever to cast this on. I don't know why, but I struggle so hard. I think between like getting 64 stitches on here, making sure they're not twisted, and then like the first couple rounds are just so fiddly because it doesn't really look like anything. It just looks like a big tangled string. <laughs> um, I was really struggling. And so I finally got it started and I got like six rounds in and then I was like, oh crap, this is not the same ribbing. <laughs> so this ribbing is two by two, which you can kind of see there. And this one I started doing one by one. So it's not a huge deal. I'm not really beat up about it. I'm not starting over. So they're just going to have different ribs on the cuff of the sock. So anyway, honestly, I'm kind of glad that I accidentally did that because I've never made a sock with a one by one rib. So maybe I'll like this better. Maybe I'll do all the rest of my socks with a one by one rib. So anyway, that is, I got that second sock started. So Hopefully I will finish the pair so I can actually wear them. I have some, uh, I pre-ordered some of the Taylor Swift yarn from Ruby and Roses and I ordered two sock sets. So those should be shipped to me soon. I think she's almost done like making, one of my sock sets is done cause she puts a like status update on her website. And the other one I think is drawing or something like that. So as soon as it's labeled and wound and everything, then my order should get shipped out. So, cause she, she doesn't ship your order until all of the stuff you ordered is done so she can just send it to you one time. So anyway, I'm so excited cause I really want to get the hat done so I can start my hat. And then I want to get those socks done so I can start the new socks with the yarn that I'm getting in the mail in the next few weeks. So yes, that is my knitting. <laughs> okay, so I do have a couple pieces of haul and then after that we can talk plans. So first up is my Bestitch Me Fabric of the Month. This is the color for March, because we don't get it until the end of the month. And excuse the loud crinkly. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's called Gold Rush, and I got a piece of 36 count. I haven't actually opened it up all the way. Ooh, that's so pretty. So yeah, I really like the modeling because I feel like it's like, it's dramatic, but it's not um, too spread out, I feel. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, like I said, this is this one's called Gold Rush and it is very gold. Very, very gold. I feel like there's another one we got that is like, not the same, but kind of similar. I wonder which one am I thinking of? Oh, maybe I was thinking of this one, and they're really not that similar. The one I was thinking of is called Bronze Age. So this is what those look like in comparison. This one's definitely more gold and yellow, and this one's more like brown chocolate milk. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I love getting these Fabric of the Months because they, usually they're like fabrics that I may not have picked out on my own mainly because I don't really like know what to pick out unless I have a project in mind. So, but I really love being able to like pick fabric for my own stash. So it's like I have my own little uh, needle workshop in my one drawer of my desk. <laughs> um, and then the second thing I got actually was a new light. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is an alt light and I think it's called, I don't actually know 
what it's called, but it has a clip on it. So you can clip it onto a desk or the back of a chair or any sturdy surface. And then it plugs in via USB. So you can either plug this into a block to plug into the wall. Or what I'm intending to do is plug this into a battery pack so that I don't need a, I don't need to rely on an outlet because last time I was at Stitch North, they did not have access to outlets unless you were like at a table against a wall or something. So this will just provide, um, I can have my light and like don't have to rely on the outlets. And this like gooseneck is very flexible, but also like it stays put where you like put it. <laughs> um, and it does have like three, um, different color settings so it's got a warm a cool and then like one that's in between and then you can also turn up the brightness up and down so yeah and i happened to get this while joanne was having like a 50 percent off Otlight light sale so this was only 15 dollars with the 50 percent off so i think it was a really good deal for the quality and the ease of use for what it does so i'm really excited to put that to you i've been using it but i'm excited to put it to use at the retreat um, because I actually have never taken a light to a retreat. This will be, I've only been to two retreats. Well, I've been, I've been to two retreats, but I've been three times. So I went to StitchCon twice, went to Stitch North once. So I guess this will be my fourth time going to a retreat. And I've never brought a light with me. So I'm really excited to have the light because it's just going to be so much easier to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then I think we can talk about plans. Um, so let's talk about WIPGO first. Um, the WIPGO, well, first of all, I finished my WIPGO goals for March. I believe one of them was to stitch some, all of my goals are 500 stitches or three days. Um, and then the rest of it is like a prompt. So the first one was stitch something with an animal. So that was the fox. And then the other one was stitch something with, was it stitch with plants? Oh, okay. It wasn't plants. It was, um, my prompt was to start, or I'm sorry, to stitch on a project that you started in the month this is called. So that would mean that I should have picked a project that I started in the month of March. However, I did not have a project that I started in the month of March. So I picked Love Boat Sampler because I had started it in April. Um, so yeah, the Fox and Love Boat were my two whip goes. And obviously worked out perfect for me because those were the two projects that I was trying to finish, um, which I did. So go me. <laughs> and then for um, April, the prompts for me are to FFO something. And then what is the other one? FFO something and stitch on a project with one strand. So anything where I'm stitching with one strand of floss it was an option. So I actually did a poll on Instagram. So I will pop up that here. So for finishing something with an FFO, I can't remember all the options I picked, but uh, Sweetest Pie was the winner. So I will be finishing Sweetest Pie into, I have this little like tray frame situation. Um, so I plan to use that and then for stitching a project with one strand, um, the winner was The Token by Long Dog Sampler. So I actually have that here to show you. Um, so that I'll just be getting 500 stitches on that. I haven't stitched on this since I started it like two months ago, I think. Um, but this is what mine looks like. So yeah, I had gotten like just over 500 stitches, I think, when I started this. Um, so it'd be nice to pull this back out. And I was going to bring this to Stitch North as well. Um, again, I don't know how feasible it's going to be for me to stitch on 40 count, but we will see. <laughs> if anything, I would like to just show it off my, to my friends because it's really pretty. But yeah, so I'm going to be working on those two things. Um, and then... That is for Whipgo, and then my favorite, favorite, favorite thing at this very moment is Deadly Aquarium. <laughs> so Deadly Aquarium is a, um, a stitch along hosted by Lola Crow Stitch Along or Lola Crow Cross Stitch, <laughs> and um, this is her third annual stitch along. Um, the first one was Haunted Library right there, and then I still have Greenhouse of Oddities as a whip. Looks like this. 
And so this one is for Deadly, this one is called Deadly Aquarium. And so I have my fabric picked out, which is a little darker than um, what she recommends, but I think it's gonna look so cool because it just screams moody sea creatures to me. Um, this is Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers Castle in the Sky. It is also 36 count linen. That is my favorite, if you can't tell. I'm pretty sure everything I showed you is either 36 or 40. But I love 36 because I can stitch with two strands. Um, and I really like stitching with two strands. And so these are all the flosses that we've got going on for this aquarium. So excited. So yeah, the first part or like is the frame release and that comes out this afternoon. Um, so by the time I edit this video, I can put up a picture of what that looks like. Um, so I'm gonna be super excited to work on that today. And I will definitely be bringing that to Stitch North as well. So, those are my plans. And I think that is all of the like stitchy crafty stuff. So, I'm going to take a quick breather and then I'm going to come back and talk to you about just like what I've been up to and maybe a couple books. All right. So, what have I been up to? Um, it's been 3 weeks since I talked to you last, and aside from all of my stitchy projects and whatnot, I have been really in back into Stardew Valley. Um, I think it was like March 19th or so that the game designer Concerned Ape released a new update for the game known as 1.6 and I first I didn't think there was going to be any like groundbreaking new stuff. Um, like I thought he was mainly just like making a few quality of life adjustments that like weren't that big of a deal but I was wrong. There's actually a bunch of new stuff that is like not quite as um, extreme as the 1.5 update was, but it's still enough to be super excited about because there's like a few new crops and like new pets that you can adopt. You can actually adopt multiple pets now. And there's just like a bunch of really fun things that I'm really excited to play. However, the update is only out for PC. It is not released for console yet. And I play Stardew Valley on the Switch. So I'm kind of just like impatiently waiting for the update to be released on switch but in the meantime I did started playing the farm that I already had and I managed to hit a lot of good milestones um, I reached 100 in skull cavern which is a big deal and I also had like completed a few of the chi challenges which was really fun and also built a obelisk which is so expensive <laughs> but really worth it so yeah anyway I've just been progressing in that game and it makes me really excited um, I ended on like the last day of winter. So when I log on again, it'll be the first day of spring. So I was kind of waiting until the weekends to play again because I want to really like, you know, get into the groove of things because you can start planting crops again and stuff like that. So anyway, love Stardew Valley. And then I also have been reading quite a bit. So I currently, um, I got a Kindle for my birthday, so I'm reading most of my stuff on my Kindle, but I also have been borrowing audiobooks from my local library via the Libby app, and which actually all the books that I've been reading, I've been borrowing from the library via the Libby app, and it is a godsend. I love it so much. So, um, support your local library so we can keep having awesome resources like that. But anyway, I uh, figured I would talk about a few of the books. I didn't like arrange much anything but I'm gonna go ahead and uh try to remember what I've read so uh I think the first one was an audiobook um by Josie Silver called A Winter in New York looks like this and this was about a girl who grew up in London with her mom and her mom had recently passed and so she decided to go to New York because that was where her mom spent a lot of her like young adult life kind of right before she was pregnant with her um and so she kind of was just trying to see what life her mom was living before she was uh, before she was around and of course she ends up meeting this guy who she like ends up having a situationship with and everything and there's like some family secrets that she's not supposed to know about because she's not part of the family and anyway it was really cute it's a cheesy little book but it's also like super sweet and I like there were several times where I was very annoyed at the main character because she was very like unsure of herself and not very confident 
but also like sometimes I just wanted to shake her and be like snap out of it <laughs> uh, but by the end of the book she like like she has really good character development throughout the book so if you're looking for a nice easy cheerful listen that's a good one and then another audiobook that I'm currently listening to is You Again by Kate mm, I can't remember Gold I can't remember her last name Kate somebody it'll be on the screen but this is kind of a like inspired by when Harry met Sally situation um these people like they meet each other but they're and then they like don't see each other for several years and then they see each other again and again don't see each other for a few years and see each other again and kind of like halfway through the book now they're just friends and then they become more than friends and so I'm I'm, I'm only like just past that halfway mark so um, there's still a lot, a lot of story left, but it is really good, and I really like that one as well. Goldbeck, I think that, I think that might be her last name. <laughs> but anyway, that one's really cute as well. And then I, on my Kindle, I'm currently reading A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is the third, yeah, the third book in the Aquatar series. And I'm also about halfway on that one. And it is just so good. I stopped. I think like chapter 36 or so um, because they were about to go into some battle scenes and I think I was really tired <laughs> so I just stopped reading and I haven't picked it back up in a day or two um, but yes as far if you haven't read the Akatar series and you're kind of on the fence about whether or not it's worth it I would say give it a try because the first book is like chill enough to where like you don't feel oh it's a robin a fat little oh he just ate a worm so cute okay I love that <laughs> um that made me so happy I'm about to tear up <laughs> oh my god okay I don't know why I'm crying I don't know why that made me emotional <laughs> Um, anyway, I'm so if you have never read Aquatar and you're thinking about it, go ahead and do it. Because if you read the first book and you're kind of like, eh, whatever, like, at least you tried, okay? The first book is really not that big of a commitment. And then the second book is like, by the end of the second book, you're like, holy shit, buckle me in, I'm ready. <laughs> so after the second book, I was very ready to read the third book. Um, but it's really good I like it um you don't have to I feel like with things that are like um extremely hyped up it's really hard to get into it because you um it's almost like too big to dip your toe in but it just do it <laughs> is my advice <laughs> so anyway um but yes I'm halfway through Aquawar as it is <laughs> um and I already put on a court of frost and starlight on hold and a court of silver flames on hold as well so currently I am very curious to see what is going on with Nesta because they keep saying things that like lead on that she might have this big giant secret stuff and I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't read it but I'm just very interested in her storyline right now <laughs> um so yeah and I think that's it for reading another big thing that happened uh was the solar eclipse that was on Monday and that was also another moment where I just felt like oh my god <laughs> um so I live north of Cincinnati and so I was in the path of totality so I was lucky enough to be able to see like the 100% coverage of the sun and it was just so cool um, I had seen a partial solar eclipse um, six seven six years ago I think um, I was a senior in college and we lived like a few hours away from totality so I didn't travel or anything and I at the time like was kind of like oh yeah that'll be cool to see whatever but now that I've seen a totality I'm kind of like I would I would go out of my way to try to see one again, which I don't think the next one will be until I'm like in my 40s. So hopefully I'm in a position at that time in my life where I can go see, see it again because it was just so cool. It was so cool. I just can't really explain it. I, um, 
I had my little solar glasses and I was like, you know, looking up every once in a while. And then the last few seconds before totality, I was like looking at the, uh, looking at it with my glasses. And as soon as I couldn't see anything anymore, I took the glasses off and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I don't know, I just felt this huge sense of like gratitude for getting to see such an amazing thing and also just like being alive to witness it. I don't know, I just, I've been feeling really grateful about the tiny things lately and that was just like icing on the cake for me. And it was just so cool and I'm so glad I got to see it. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I have to talk to you about today. Um, that was all I wrote down and as we know, if I go off script, it gets weird and uh, rambly. So I'm going to let you go and I will talk to you in my next video, which will be in three weeks. I think that will be the weekend after Stitch North. So you will hear all sorts of um, Stitch North recap for me. Um, there's a bunch of friends that some I've met in person, some I haven't that are going to be there. Um, that I'm so excited to see and... I, Taylor Swift's new album comes out next weekend, so I'm going to be blasting the Tortured Poets Department while I'm driving to Canada. <laughs> so anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will talk to you in three weeks. Bye!